Hi there, and welcome to EU TV's The Review. You're joining us for our Christmas film countdown, and here we've got Adam Hello. and I'm Aaron. So let's get down to discussing your and our favourite Christmas films of all time. Did you see Arthur Christmas? I've not seen it. It's on my list. It just came up on Netflix. It's an Aardman film, which is the people who made oh, Chicken Run. Aardman, and yeah. yeah. Classics. Which I didn't realise it was them. It's, no, it's, I didn't either. It's computer animated. Yeah, it's not do... the usual clay animation, is yeah. it? It's about the... Um, and it's got three generations of Santa Claus in it. It's got Grand Santa, Santa Claus, and then Santa Claus has two sons. And it focuses on the second son, which is Arthur Christmas. The current Santa, who's um, voiced by Jim Broadbent, he's kind of incompetent and quite lazy. And then his son, Steve Christmas, which is his name, builds this kind of massive machinery around him to sort of do Christmas for him while he's just being quite lazy and just being quite incompetent. Arthur tries to save the day by getting a present to somebody who didn't get theirs delivered because the big machinery kind of missed somebody out. Okay. And it's a really good film. Like, it's really charming and surprisingly funny. Jim Broadbent's in it. Who else is in it? Anyone? Uh, any Hugh other Laurie big names? plays Steve Christmas. Oh, excellent. Um, James McAvoy is Arthur Christmas. And I think it's Bill Nye playing Grand Santa. Superb cast. Uh, yeah, it's really good. It's big, like, big players. I think yeah. Ardman has got a lot of clout in yeah. like, British cinema. If you just show day. anyone Wallace and Gromit, you're in, basically. Actually, Wallace and Gromit are kind of Christmassy because did you see A Matter of Loaf and Death? I did. It's, that came out at Christmas. That's why I was going to mention it. Yeah, those classic BBC things that come out at Christmas, they're always very good. Yeah. Did you, like any of your TV shows you watched when you were younger, have Christmas specials that you liked? Uh, well, there was always Doctor Who. Yeah, Doctor Who, Christmas specials. Um, Big fan of Doctor Who. Institution, really, every Christmas. They're never... They're never that good. Sometimes they're a bit mixed of quotes. <laughs> Remember the one which was uh, the Titanic in space? Yes. Like, and it had Kylie Minogue in it. It was a bit ludicrous. It was just to get Kylie Minogue on television, yeah. really. Uh, I'm okay with a Big fan of Kylie Minogue. Yeah, big fan. Uh, <laughs> gotta love her. Um, proud Australian. This Christmas, I will be watching Soon we've got Jodie Whittaker coming yes, in. Yes, it's her first. Is it her first century into the show? I think so. This is where Peter Peter Capaldi bows out, and I know they've got the first Doctor sort of cameo. I think I will be tuning into uh, the Christmas University Challenge series. Ah. Don't know if you watch that. Me and my mum watch that quite religiously, and um, because the answers, because it's for celebrities, celebrities. Um, the answer's slightly easier, <laughs> which means that you feel cleverer because you're like, oh, I'm yes. clever than all these celebrities, and they watch the real thing and all these. Incredibly clever people. It's the same with Pointless. My oh, mum yeah. refuses to watch it unless it's the celebrity edition. And then she, oh my god, I'm so smart now. <laughs> yeah, right, okay, mum, sure. Recent Christmas films, we've talked about Arthur Christmas, yeah. we've talked about Christmas television. Uh, I'm trying to think of really good ones in the last 10 years. I can certainly think of good ones in the last 20 years. So I'm thinking yeah. Polar Express. Did you I love like Polar Actually. Express? I adore Polar Ooh, Express. Oh, okay. Love Actually, I'm a fan of. I like Love Actually a lot. Um, Polar Express, it's a bit. Uncanny, like I struggle with the the animation. I found okay. it a bit like jarring. Maybe it was just me, but um, I, again, I haven't watched it in a long time. But I, I love it. It's Tom Hanks. The the bizarre thing is, it's just a Tom Hanks film. Hmm. He plays nearly every main character. Does he? He's the train conductor. He's oh no, he, does he play the voice of the boy? No, I think they actually got a boy to play the voice. But okay. he's meant to be the boy, and he's also the voice of Father Christmas. He's also the voice of the mysterious. A homeless man on the train. For a kids' film, it's very layered and very complex. Love Actually, though, mm. institution. In that. Yeah, uh, we can't sort of talk about Christmas without mentioning the greatest rom-com people... of the last twenty years. Also, does an excellent job of for a rom-com actually showing that relationships are kind of crap sometimes. Yeah. Um, with of course Alan Rickman's character being just an ass, really leaving. His lovely wife, Emma yeah, Thompson. He's kind of a terrible person. He is a terrible person. And then, of course, Colin Firth gets a good kick in the teeth. Hugh Grant technically sacks a member of staff just because he can't stop fancying her, which yeah, I is against that. all sorts of employment law. The, the joke in the, in the film is that she's overweight. She's really not. It, she's, that irritates me to this day. It, I don't get off. it. It's mm. like weird fat shaming when no one's fat and it just kind of doesn't fit in. Yeah, I guess it's the noughties. It, <laughs> it probably wouldn't have happened <laughs> today, which is, I guess, Show how far we've come. It's kind of like, someone said this to me recently, Pulp Fiction in a way. All these different stories yeah. playing off against each other. You see characters develop across strange spans of time. And it all sort of culminates in final scenes. 
of course, Pulp Fiction is a very different yeah. film mood-wise, but they're both ensemble pieces. They're both yes. kind of a uh, collection of people brought together. You don't initially understand the way they're all connected, and then during the film, you get more apparent. If you look at the deleted scenes as well, the film comes into another character. It develops even more. Oh yeah. Uh, there's a beautiful storyline that is completely deleted from the film, and it's so touching. The headmistress of the school, where we see the final sort of act play out. Uh, has a partner who is suffering from long-term illness and as her partner sort of begins to decline you see her mood change and Christmas was always their sort of thing to have together and now she's losing the one she loves and that storyline is beautiful because it finishes off at the secondary school saying oh this concert's dedicated to her and really it doesn't add anything to any of the other storylines but it's just another touching oh, wow. sort of note in there and it shows I've known people have um, accused Love Actually of being very hetero yes it's actually because it's a same-sex partnership and they're elderly as well it, it kind of just gives that variety that the film can be accused of lacking so if you get the chance do watch that it adds a lot of depth to the film i think which, i will be watching that which might not be there normally there are some christmas films out there that people say aren't christmas films yeah one that you. springs to mind is die hard yeah die hard i guess would you consider die hard a christmas film Yes, because it happens at Christmas, and I know that's a very poor reason. Well, it more it happens at Christmas. There's like lots of Christmas. It happens at a Christmas party. Yeah. There's a lot of ho 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 jokes. Like, uh, I think it becomes like like a counterculture Christmas film. Like a, like <laughs> a, a Christmas film. I, I think it's definitely a Christmas film. It's just one that rejects the schmaltz and the kind of um. The style of Christmas films that existed in the 80s and 90s before. When was Die Hard out? Was it an 80s film? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's an 80s film. Yeah. yeah, it reeks of the 80s. I think it's a Christmas film. It's just like not the kind of film that you'd watch on Christmas Day to relax. No, not at all. But certainly on Christmas Eve, yeah. I would watch it and I might try and start a coup in my house and get that going. So, what's then the, the all time my, favourite? My favourite, I think there's one outstander for best Christmas film. And it's it's Wonderful Life, which I saw like three days ago like, again, and it's so good. I saw it with my friend who didn't understand, you know, the whole concept that it's like a he's got a really bad, sucky life, and then it, it shows him what it'd be like if he'd never been born. Mm. I didn't realise that they didn't mention that until right at the end that that was the central idea of the film. Yeah. So for the first two hours, it's really miserable. That final fifteen minutes is just glorious. It is superb. I really like. It's Wonderful Life. I think it's got the best ending of almost any film. It does. The, the ending is everything you would you want to sort of convey in a Christmas film. Yeah. The power of friends, the power of family. Um, the power of doing good things. The power of doing good things to give thanks for everything that's around and all yeah. the things that you have got in life that you might not consider a great... Um, it is just the epitome of everything we want to sort of say at Christmas. And Definitely. the acting by James Stewart and Donna Reed, the sort of central couple, is incredible. They really do carry that film. And I, I think it's a bizarre thing to notice, but the cinematography for quite an old film yeah, is superb. It's good. It's, it's Frank Capra. That's it. Frank Capra. A few years ago, I saw that film colorized. It was weird. It's bizarre colorized. Yeah, have you seen it colorized? I've, I've seen it colorized. Yeah, it's it, odd. I don't know if it takes away from the magic slightly. It's a different experience, and I think it definitely doesn't need color. In the black and white, it was obviously made for that. Mm. And Frank Capra was very aware of that throughout. One of my favourite things about Frank Capra is in all of his films, you know, he's got a pet raven, and he oh, puts yes. his raven in all of his films. Uncle Billy's raven? Yeah, that's, that's the uh, raven. I think that's really sweet. If oh, I had a pet yeah. raven, I'd totally do that. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that's superb. Well, I'm going to have to watch the film again now just to really cotton on to that. Um, so, yeah, I think between the two of us, we'd agree It's a Wonderful Life is yeah. the epitome of what a Christmas film should be. So, I think for our wonderful audience out there. We have reached a conclusion. If you disagree with us, please tell us in the comments or dislike the video if you really want, if you want to be that difficult about it. But as it is, that's Adam, I'm Aaron. Thank you for joining us today to talk about our favorite Christmas films. And of course, a Merry Christmas to you from us here at EUTV's The Review. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.